Hello, Rotters! Welcome back to Blackwood, the podcast that takes a deep dive into the best worst horror films of the 80s and 90s. I'm Stevie, your VHS veteran. I hope you're all doing horrendously. First, a big hello and shout out to the new Brain Rot patrons, James Patterson, Martin Aldridge and Alex Ailing. What's up, players? They became patrons over at patreon.com forward slash Stevie's Brain Rot, where you can get access to bonus content and other perks. Uh, uh, speaking of which, actually, today I'm joined by Cody Jameson Strand to chat all things Critters from 1986, but we decided it might be fun to cover each Critters film from the original quadrilogy, so our episode on Critters 2, The Main Course, will be dropping this Tuesday over on Patreon, so head over there if you want to continue the retrospective with us. Uh, the merch store is also now open, where we have some pretty rad limited edition items. Just head to steviesbrainrot.com and have a browse. Now then, as I just mentioned, Cody Jameson Strand is back! Last time he was on the show we were talking about Graydon Clark's Uninvited, you know, the, the one about the killer cat puppet. Keeping to tradition, we decided to talk about more killer puppets, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Get it? Christ's, for Christ's sake. Uh, anyway, here we go. Well, 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 if it isn't Cody J. Strand. Hello! I've returned from hell! <laughs> <laughs> I actually, no, I did get a lot of messages about um, getting you back on the show, uh, but I ignored them and got you on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we never want to hear from him again. Get him out of here! <laughs> I had to turn my volume to one. <laughs> I can't help it. The, my teachers in school always used to say, you hear Cody before you see him. <laughs> yes. I'm not joking, though. I actually did. It was very funny. I did get a message from someone saying, once my ears stop ringing, I love that episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would apologize, but it's my gift and my curse. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it pays the bills and gets you arrested. Well... <laughs> Hasn't paid anything for the last year, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm no, but I'm so fucking happy to have you back, even if no one else is. And um, <laughs> it's <laughs> no, but um, when I I was looking at um just the franchises from when I was a kid, and I mean, eventually I'm going to cover them all. I have to, but like Ghoulies and all those sort of little monster movies, and of course, Critters was so forefront in that movement. Obviously you had Gremlins first, but I was never a massive fan of Gremlins. I was more the slightly cheaper knockoff versions. And so this franchise has was really important in my life. What about you? What's your history with Critters? Well, after watching the first movie, I realized that I had never actually seen the first movie. Right. Um, because I'm more familiar with the thing I remember the most about Critters, besides like finding it when I was a child on the television and being like, what am I watching? Yeah. Um, was the Critter Ball. And then it wasn't in this movie, and I realized that I don't think I'd ever seen it before. But I just remember them forming a giant ball and rolling over someone and devouring him in an instant. Yeah, totally. You remember you remember the Critter's Ball. You remember like the scene in the diner. You remember, I remember the Easter Bunny moment where the guy's dressed as an Easter Bunny and he, and he gets eaten and smashes through a church window. <laughs> and all of these things are from Critters too. So little original Critters it kind of gets overlooked and you don't, well, you don't remember it really because they really, it got turned up when they went on with Critters too. I know. And they had some really good like seedlings of ideas in this one um, that they clearly just turned up to 11 in the sequels. Yeah, totally. I think I do, I did find with this, it was kind of trying to find its tone throughout. Very. Like, uh, sometimes I was like, they're going for full on monster monster flick here. And there were moments that are genuinely horrific and scary. Like anyone getting their collarbone bitten for me is just a massive no-no. Oh, horrible. But yeah. then they totally nailed that in the second one. And we should probably say now, actually, because I haven't mentioned this, we have decided, the two of us, we are going to do all four films. So the next three um, will be on Patreon. We'll be doing Critters 2, Critters 3 and... A critters four. <laughs> <Why do you? laughs> critters one, critters two, critters three, and critters eight. They just skip right to it. Yeah, because it's critters in space, number four. 
which is, I mean, home, right? Twitter's at home. It should be right, <laughs> right? Exactly. Which is, I didn't even, I, didn't, I never remembered that they were from outer space. I right. never remembered that they were uh, criminals on the run. Like I never, <laughs> rem- I never remembered any of that stuff. So that like, threw me. Yeah, and then the first five minutes, you're like, we're on an asteroid in outer space, a prison <laughs> asteroid. You know, it's like, what the fuck? But um, no, well, we'll get to them. I can't wait. But number three has Leonardo DiCaprio in one it of his not. first roles. Yes, it does. Oh, I know. Number four has Angela Bassett. You're kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's <laughs> a, I, I cannot wait for you to see this. So um. <laughs> it was um, directed by Stephen Herrick, um, and he also wrote the screen pro- screenplay. It's his first film, right? It's his first film. But this guy went on to direct amazing eighties and nineties films. So Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, amazing. The Mighty Ducks, amazing. Don't tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> With uh, what's her name, Christina Aguilera. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, Christina Applegate. Christina Applegate. Don't yeah. tell my babysitter's dead. There you go. And also did the 101 Dalmatians movie, the Glenn Close. Incredible. I totally get it because that his sense of humor, I mean, that from those movies is present in Critters. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah, you can see the seeds of that here. Like it's like this split up into eight different movies, all the different ideas from it. And you can see it in all of those. Uh, it was written by uh, Dominic Muir, right? And he has <laughs> subsequently written some incredible trash films that I know you'd love. Do you know the Ginger Dead Man franchise? I, isn't that Gary Busey? <laughs> <It's> Gary Busey. <laughs> it's like <the> Gary Busey. <laughs> oh, in his Oscar-winning role, Gary right. Busey. I can't. And the, uh, it's so good because he's it's it's very similar to Child's Play, as in like this evil guy gets put, put into something, but he's um an evil sort of villain and he dies and his mum, who happens to be a witch, um mixes his ashes, mixes his ashes into gingerbread mix and it becomes a killer gingerbread man. Incredible. So yeah, those <laughs> those those are the people you've got on board. For Incredible. Incredible. Um, and the uh, yeah, the monster boom of the eighties. Obviously, it started with Gremlins in nineteen eighty four, which spawned Loads of little creature features on the murder rampage. Ghoulies, munchies, hobgoblins and critters. However, Herrick, uh, the director, he is absolutely adamant that the screenplay for Critters was written years before Gremlins even went into production. So it was actually separate and an independent idea, which I totally believe. And I mean, I suppose the main tie with Gremlins, apart from the obvious animal shit, but... um, is the the humor, yeah. and that's where I go. Ah, oh, it's it's very similar in humor as in the way they send it up, and there's a lot of slapstick and stuff like that. Weirdly, yeah, mixed with like insane gore, you know. Yes, it's. De- I definitely remember it being more gory though. So that's obviously from the second one because people get like with the critical get completely right. skinned down to a right. skeleton, right? Because um, I think there's actually only two deaths in this actually. Yeah, one of which being fucking Billy Zane. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, he's only done three films. This, Demon (laughs) Knight, and Titanic, right? And that's it. But what an illustrious career. What an arc. (laughs) (laughs) And, well, you pointed this out. It was designed by the Chiodo brothers. Yes. I saw that right away. And it's only because I'm obsessed with killer clowns from outer space that I was like, you're kidding me. As soon as it popped up, it was like, Chiodo brothers. And I was like, oh, shit. And so, of course, I had to, like, Google confirm and, you know, make sure that I wasn't making it up. And... You know, I was like, this is genius. They, they are amazing. I'm, I think they did Team America as well. Oh, my God. I think they did the puppets for <laughs> Team America, I swear, <laughs> which is so cool. And they um, they based the critter design on Taz the Tasmanian Devil, which is oh, so cool. Of course, of course. Yeah. Oh, my God. With just like shark teeth. Just yeah, rows and it's rows of shark so teeth. many. I love it. Um, right. I'm going to give you the IMDb synopsis and then I want one of your famous Ooh. synopsis. Okay. Synopsis? Is that what you say? Synopsises. I only came up with one this time. but Okay, so this is the IMDb one. Um, a group of small but vicious alien creatures called Krites escape from an alien prison transport vessel and land near a small farm town on Earth, pursued by shape-shifting bounty hunters. There you go. <laughs> I said, um, illegal aliens crash land in the worst possible country for illegal aliens. I like that. <laughs> Oh my God, very <laughs> <laughs> very clever <laughs> i but um also well let we might as well go through the film so yeah it starts on a high security prison asteroid right <laughs> which i mean because of course i didn't remember that 
No. I thought they were like just came from the middle of the earth or whatever. Or like they were the asteroid and crashed, whatever. And then it was like when you see the guy that has that helmet that like the penis head. Yes. I was like, where are we? <laughs> yeah, where are we? How did we get here? I didn't sign up for this. That was the, my first three thoughts. I thought I literally clicked it because I thought I had clicked on the wrong movie. Right. It's like a Star Trek episode. This. Yeah. And I was like, what? This isn't. It is. Yeah. Oh, so okay. then, yeah, they tell us that there are eight Krites being held prisoner. And that alone made me laugh. And I was like, wait, what have they done? What space crime have they committed? Like, oh, no, you never find out why they are imprisoned. Because you just think of that they're, they're like vermin. But clearly they're not. They're a full on race and they've committed right. some sort of crime. And it can't be just feeding and killing. So it's like, well, they said there were. There were 10 of them, and then they had to kill two of them because they were eating too much. Right. But then it was like... I I, I, I don't know, but I, I, this blew my mind because the entire backstory of these critters was afresh for me. And I was like, so they're, crim they're criminals on the run they're from the galaxy. criminals on the run. They're miniature criminals on the run. But what have they done? Like, I, was, I really hope it's like selling kryptonite in the black market. Yes, yeah, embezzlement. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but they steal they steal a space they break out and they steal a space spacecraft and uh we don't right. see any of them for actually you don't see any of them for like an hour um, no you just see a wall explode and then like <laughs> a spaceship like oh they got it after them <laughs> and you see a little hand pulling a lever the driving wheel yeah! sort of yeah! <laughs> uh, but then the, the we uh we meet these two bounty hunters that are they're, they're sent to follow them wherever they go and capture them and kill them and the uh the bounty hunters and I sort of don't remember this either, but it's blurry in my head. But um, they have these green face, uh, featureless faces. Yep. I don't remember this at all. I don't remember anything about this. And the faces, the aliens are cool because the guy's like, and he even says, what does he say? Remember, we don't want as much damage as last time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we already know that these bounty hunters are playing fast and loose with the law. Okay. And they are, they cause chaos wherever right. they go they are so much worse than the critters like they can't open a door without ripping it off the hinges which is also then another thing like what did the critters fucking do <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean if these guys aren't in jail but the yeah. critters are in jail <laughs> right. and these guys have a higher body count than the critters do by the end of the movie <laughs> and also why not just let let them go they're going to another galaxy. Why do they need to find them? I suppose they've taken their spacecraft, so they need that back. And then, uh, so then we meet our lovely Kansas family, the Brown family, right? And it is everything you could expect. It's like a Lassie episode or Little House on the Prairie. I mean, it also looked like op the opening The Wizard of Oz. I wrote like, suddenly it was like, we're in Kansas. And then it zoomed in on a sign and we were in Kansas. Oh, right. You thought that before you saw that. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, we're in Kansas. It's perfect. What's the um? What was that TV show where it's Good Night John Boy, Good Night Sue Ann? Do you remember uh, the Waltons? I have no idea. You know that? Oh my god! <laughs> no idea From the eighties, and it, it had this thing of uh, you'd see the exterior of the house at the end of every episode, and they'd go through the entire massive family going Good Night Sue Ann, Good Night Mom, Good Night John Boy, and it go on and on and on. And I am so sure. Well, I'm not so sure, but I think this opening breakfast scene with the Browns is so a skit of that because I actually had to write down the dialogue because of the amount of names that get said in three minutes yes. is so outrageous. Yes. So this is this is an entire exchange. <clears throat> Ready? Yes, yes, yes. yes okay. Yes, yes, yes. April, telephone. Brad, you're a jerk. Jay, breakfast. Helen, was that Charlie calling? No, it was Steve. Steve? Steve who? The boy at school. What happened to Richard? Brad, get Chewy off the table. Have you seen Charlie this morning, Brad? So who is Steve? What happened to Richard? I was like, pause. What is happening? <laughs> Rewind. Right. And and those characters, we don't even meet. We only meet Steve. Right. We meet, no, we meet Charlie. Whoever, no. Yes. Whichever one Who's... Billy Zane is. We All right, meet that's Billy Steve. Zane. Yeah, that's Steve. Yeah, we, we don't meet... meet Richard. Right. We do meet Charlie. Charlie's the, that rant. I, there's the introductions. They happen. First, it's we're in space. Yes. Then we're in Kansas. Yeah. Then we're in the police station. Yeah. Then you know. Then we're shooting like our sister in the ass with a uh, fucking <laughs> slingshot. slingshot. Yeah, it's it's wild. Totally. Yeah, you don't get any time to settle in on what the fuck is happening. Yeah. So Helen, the mum, is played by D. Wallace. I mean, I've got, we've got to talk about I that. Can't. She is the ultimate eighties no. genre mum. 
I wrote Scream Queen D Wallace in all caps. Uh, yeah, What's E.T. Your favorite? The Howling. Oh, Cujo for me. I was going to say the same thing. She is a badass in that. But also the flip flop of her. Do you remember Frighteners? When turns out she was the villain. Yes, she's the evil one. They flipped it, right? That's the Peter, the uh, Peter Jackson. And the kid, Brad, is Scott Grimes. Now he is Steve in American Dad, the son. Wow. Yeah, and he's also in the Orville, the other Seth MacFarlane thing. Wow. Um. So yeah, as you said, we jump to the sheriff's department, and um, we get Sheriff Harv played by Emmett Walsh. She's a bit he's of a legend. Fantastic. He's such a legend. And also, he's hilarious in this movie. He does. Yeah, I mean, he does what he does in every single movie. But I, I pay, that's what I pay for when I want right. when I see Emmett Walsh. <laughs> if he pl- if he suddenly played like some weird emotional <laughs> part, right. like this isn't him. This is um, weird. But the receptionist is Lynn Shay. So people, a lot of people will know her from the Insidious franchise. She's Elise. She's the main woman. I knew I recognized her, but she's so young. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what it was, she's a, she did a lot of these in her day. So basically New Line Cinema, who produced this, um, they started as a distribution company only um, after films have been produced, but they produced Nightmare on Elm Street. That was their first film that they produced with um, Wes Craven. And so obviously that was a massive hit. And so then they became a production company film studio themselves, putting out films. So after Elm Street, uh, they did Elm Street 2 the year year after. And obviously, Freddy was a huge uh, box office income. So they start expanding their production line. And then Critters was one of the first non-Elm Street films that they did. But anyway, uh, that's a slight digression. Uh, (laughs) But it's run by Bob Shea, uh, who is... Yeah, who is the brother of Lynn Shay. And Lynn Shay's actually in Nightmare on Elm Street. She plays the teacher. So she always popped up in his films. So that's why she's in that. So she's in so many horror films from this time. And she just come, pops up in like one scene. So she's like a very specific type of scream queen. Like she just pops in for a day, does a bit. I love it. I mean, I love that she's getting her dues now. That Because she, she's like, you know, um, she's a mainstay now. But I mean, like in like horror films, it's like if you have oh, Lynn yeah. Shay then like people want to see totally them. like the new uh the reboot of the grudge like she's the lead in that and so you know it's amazing and she is so good she's uh, great yeah fantastic mm. uh so yeah we meet charlie we sort of meet him as you said but he's uh he's spending the night in the slammer but yeah. they've also let him have a bottle of whiskey in jail because he's yeah like behind bars swigging and now he is in all four critters films is he really yeah, so he's like our through line. So he's in all four of them. And he, um, the actor, uh, Don Opper, he's the brother of Barry Opper, who's one of the film's main producers. So lots of this is a family affair. Everything makes sense now. Yeah, and he's also this guy um, who plays Charlie. He's credited for writing some additional scenes in this film. So who knows? It's probably just some ad lib. I was going to say, he seemed like he was kind of playing fast and loose with the script there Uh, yeah but you don't we don't really find out who he is he's he's like almost a part of the brown family even though he's not related he works for the the relationship is so strange the relationship is so strange he works for the dad but he's always just running around with the son who's a terrorist mind you (laughs) can we talk about how the son builds bombs yeah this was such an 80s thing though all the kids in the 80s films were obsessed with fireworks and exploding shit up oh my god uh, yeah, but Charlie, I mean, they even mention him in the breakfast scene. Like, oh, where's Charlie? So, like, is he a slave? Is he the me- is he the help? I don't, I don't know. really. I don't know. And he also seems, like, not all there. In the oh, well, yeah, he, it's a sort of slightly offensive hick performance, isn't it? Where it's sort yeah. of, and um, he believes extraterrestrials are talking to him through his feelings. <laughs> I know. But I even wrote, what did I write down? I was like, this guy's going to have one hell of a day when they find out that he's been right. This <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's, it's all true. Yeah. Uh, so then the we've got the bounty hunters. Uh, and this is when they we choose. We need to talk about this. Yeah, come on. We need to talk about this. Um. <laughs> I w- this is the I was the least prepared for this moment. The bounty okay. hunters who are in they have the green faces, yeah, faces with no um, symptoms. That's not it. What are these called? Right. Eyes? No. What are they? Features. There you go. Not symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> no symptoms. <laughs> the symptoms no of my face. Yeah, they're just blank slates, and so they start watching scenes of. Yeah, they're trying to get to know Earth. Yeah, and so the one settles on. Uh, like an MTV mo- video, music video, and he chooses the likeness of a superstar who's played by Terrence Mann. Yes. Who was a Broadway legend. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was not ready for this because I didn't realize he was going to be in this movie. And I'm a He's big in all fan four. Terrence. He's not. 
Yes, he is. Him and Charlie. Does he actually get to play the superstar version eventually? No, he's always Ugg the alien, but me- but as... So, yeah, because he settles on Johnny Steele, who's this... Johnny 80- Steele! <laughs> <laughs> this pop star. Which, like, kind of happens to, like, be a thing that people recognize him as Johnny Steele, the- but also not. Not enough, though. I thought not that enough. was... I thought I it was going to be such great comedy that this, basically, this absolute rock legend is walking around their little town in Kansas. And- yeah. But only one person goes, is that Johnny Steele? And it's ADR. It's like dubbed in afterwards. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And like the other alien can't quite make up his mind. So he keeps changing into different people, which I actually, when the first change happened, I thought that was comedy genius. It's so good. But also when uh, when Terrence Mann turns into Johnny Steele, it's a really lengthy process. Like he's it's, a skull. I wrote it's reverse uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's what yes. it felt like. Because it was like, for some reason, suddenly the green blank slate was gone yeah. and replaced by a skull yes. that then had flesh build around it. Yeah. And actually, it was kind of a cool effect. Oh, it's great, but it never happens again. Never happens again. And and it actually took some time. But then when the other alien shape shifts several times... He just shakes his head like Beethoven and then he's done. And he's like the, the guy, you know, it's just, it's, um, they couldn't quite decide on the lore there. But Terrence Mann, can I tell my Terrence Mann story? Oh my God, please. So Terrence Mann and I, I was I was in college and I was working in a summer stock theater in Connecticut. Terrence right. Mann was doing, it was at the University of Connecticut and they do two shows, mm-hmm. uh, but they run simultaneously. So they have two casts, right? I was doing Susical and he was doing uh, My Fair Lady. And he was also directing it and his the wife was choreographing, like the whole family was there. And every Monday uh, they would have a cookout where both casts would come together and they would do like a cookout for everybody. Right. Yeah. And I w- ended up standing in line to get my food and I was right in front of Terrence Mann. And the cast really don't interact at all. Uh, but I wanted to say something. I was like 19. I really wanted to like say, hi, I'm a huge fan. I mean, obviously he's like, you know. Terrence Mann, Jesus the fucking beast, you know? We get to the food and they have hot dogs and they have turkey dogs and they have like, like, and then like vegan options, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is this vegan bullshit? Like, I turned to him and like trying to start conversation. Yeah, yeah, trying to be casual. What is this vegan bullshit? You know, he's like, oh, actually, I kind of like it. Uh, And I was, I, he just said that and I started sweating and I got out of line. Yeah. yeah, That was it. Oh, it wasn't I hate even that. like a huge thing, but I was just, I'm so socially awkward. And also the fact that you tried to be really casual with it. I came it on and, strong. Yeah. I came on strong and then I bailed early. <laughs> <laughs> and you went hungry. Yeah, yeah. It was like, I'll go to the back of my mind. Uh, and that's it. We never spoke again. <laughs> 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 we were there for the whole summer and I avoided him for the rest of my time there. I'm sure I was just the fucking weird, oh, weird, man. weird kid. Weird kid. Oh, I just relate to that so much though. When you really, especially when you're younger, when you come up with this really cool, casual way of saying something to someone and then it just completely fucking backfires. And yeah. you're like, and but you don't have any yeah. backup and then you yeah. just like the whole plan is ruined and you just yeah. run. And he <laughs> and wasn't even like saying anything. He's like, oh no, I don't mind him. Like it wasn't even like, you know. Yeah. End of conversation. Yeah. I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> and it was like, brrr, pew, you know, like a fucking road runner. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke cloud. Just oh, like, man. Bye. Well, you're about to see a lot of him as we discuss these full films. I, I mean, they were great. The Bounty Hunters are great. And um, yeah, and then we have yeah Billy Zane who plays uh, Steve, who's April's boyfriend. Who shows up in the most un New York car I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> what do you mean? Like he shows up in like this hot rod. What is he doing here? And then they drove the hot rod through the worst driveway I've ever seen. <laughs> like to get uh, to this country road. Um, and he steps out and he's got his ponytail and uh, like, you uh, know, his, his button shirt. And I was like, that's Billy Zane. Yeah, it's fucking Billy Zane. That's Billy Zane. Before the Titanic. Oh my God. Yeah, but he's playing a sort of I've, well, it's, it's not fair to say that Steve's an asshole. You don't. He, he's there at, at the dinner table, and then the next time you see him, he, there's critters attacking. Um, but the, yeah, he's, so. he's actually like a weird. Like he's not an asshole, even though they kind of imply that he should be like an uppity New Yorker. But he's actually just like a normal guy with allergies, and like right. who doesn't right. really want to hook up with the the girl. Yeah, it's very strange because well, they go off to the barn to uh, to make out, and then. 
after that, l- l- we'll talk about what happens in between all that. But then when we go back to the Bond, they're still just kissing, like not even a shoe has been taken off. And not I'm even like, a shoe. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, this something's doesn't up. Add up. This doesn't add up. <laughs> this is sus. <laughs> yeah, this is sus. This is sus. <laughs> I think Steve from New York might be, you know. Yeah, yeah, from New yeah, York. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we, oh, we do get a death now, though. Because we still haven't seen the critters at this point, but it's Jeff the cop. Who has a th- history of pretending to be the aliens. It's a weird. Weird character, but I was obsessed with the actor. Yeah, me too. Especially, so but he's driving, his, he's patrolling in the cop car, right? And um, a crate runs ac- uh, rolls across the road. Right. Um, and he gets out because he thinks it was a dog. My favorite thing he does to try and lure the dog back out, he goes, bark, bark, bark. <laughs> I was too furiously writing. I was writing. This is not Kansas. I know because no, no one would swerve for a rodent. <laughs> no one would swerve for a rodent <laughs> in Kansas. Coming from the country myself, that won't happen. Right. They'll run over the dog mm-hmm. and then just keep on going. Okay. <laughs> it literally happened to my dog. Okay. Like someone ran over my dog at high school and then came up to my brother and said, "Dude, I'm sorry, I ran over your dog." Like. <laughs> No one's no one's gonna swear for a dog, you know. Okay. It's just it's just not happening. Right. Well, and then the fact that he gets out, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it was a dog, doggy. Yeah, he literally goes, "Hey, hey doggy, bark, bark, bark." <laughs> like the dog's clear. Oh, that sounds like one of my own. I'm gonna come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he gets con- killed in the most confusing way. Go on, yeah, because he falls down. <laughs> No, they can shoot spines, poison spines. Like it's not right. But the thing is, it it's not poison that it doesn't um it doesn't kill you and it doesn't paralyze you. It just sort of makes you really tired. I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's what seems to happen. Yeah, it is. It's so, and it's also not specific either, because like for some people, they're like after the after it gets pulled out, it's like they're still woozy. Yeah. But like later, when someone it gets like plucked out and they're like perky again, you know, like <laughs> immediately. But he gets well, he crawls under the car i mean he gets pulled under the car but you could tell that they're like we need you to sell this yeah because you can see like where the movements of the shoulders crawling are on his yeah, hips are moving yeah. side to side <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 and then when they find his body do you notice that when he dies his head goes under the car yeah and then when they find his body his head is his legs under the car no way really Oh, of course, because because then because when the uh, bounty hunter finds him, which is such a cool moment, he chooses to transform into him. But he ch- obviously transforms with all the damage to his face. Right, and it was like uh, Terrence Mann gets into the passenger seat, and then the blank alien suddenly gets in, and it's the dead cop. Yeah. And I wrote, "LOL, comedy gold." Ge- oh my god, genius transformed into the dead version. LOL, exclamation point. It's a nice touch that. And then, and the uh, the critters have made it to the Browns' house now because Dee Wallace sees the little glowing red eyes <laughs> out the kitchen window. How it got up to the kitchen window, I don't know. I know, I know, I know. Um, it climbed the wall, I guess. Yes, sure. Maybe the siding. I mean, I don't care because I love it. Just to play peekaboo with the housewife. Now, did I miss something? Why they go down to the basement and that's where the dad gets his hat? But why are they going there? Did the lights go out or something? The phone line was cut aha okay and then the lights go out okay and it's the crates down in the basement but yeah this is the this is when they attack him and i did not like it it honestly i found it really horrible yeah i agree it's because uh there's something i hate like when something gets like eaten in a movie usually it's like a giant monster that like swallows you in one bite right but like in, in a movie when it's a bunch of tiny little mouths well that's why you love piranha 3d don't you Right, yeah. I do, I do. I'm guilty. Um, but like that is disturbing to me. Yeah, I hate it. Lots of little mouths because you can't focus on one bit of pain to try and make it stop. It's like right. Oh, it's horrible. Right, and it's not like a chomp where it's like I'm I'm gone. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I'm gonna bleed out in one minute. It's like loads of yeah. little. And I thought that was the scene that I thought was the most uh, horror centric and was done the best. I think definitely because it was it was very thrilling. But I loved the reveal of the critter. When you have like the the slow zoom in, the walk towards it, and the the the, on the uh, shelf, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The flashlight is on him, and the things like rustling yeah. over there, and he's the way it looks up like ah, you know. <laughs> it's like I, I loved it so much, and then suddenly they're everywhere. Yeah, and there's definitely more than eight. Yeah, I thought Dad was going to get it. I really did. I didn't think he was going to make it out of that basement. No, because he gets attacked as well again in about ten minutes' time. Yeah, Dad goes through it in this movie. And uh, the so the yeah the hunters have arrived, and then they've gone to. <laughs> they go to the church. 
they go on a whole journey <laughs> trying to find these critters, which you'd think they would ha- they would have some kind of alien tech to like pinpoint where their ship is. <laughs> It is their ship. True. Yeah, that's so true. They're missing ship. And if they can make space traveling vehicles, then surely they can link them up somehow. If I can track my iPhone across the planet, <laughs> they can, you know yeah, what I mean? that's true. I do love that the basis of the film is it's not aliens versus humans. It's aliens versus aliens, but they're just using Earth as the football pitch. It's really cool. And also yeah. the crates, they're so easy to kill. They're like pests, really. And it's just finding them and getting a good shot at them before they roll off. Right. That's the tricky part. They're they're easy to kill, but also invulnerable. And the movie couldn't quite decide that. Because mm. like, like at one point, but I think it's whatever they eat, their stomachs are invincible. <laughs> because like the girl tried to stab the one yeah. with a pitchfork and it like ate the metal yeah, it part. It snapped it. That's right. And then, like, the boy used his terrorism powers and tried to throw a bomb at the one, and it just ate it. And remember, it made that, like, boof, and, like, smoke came out of and it? apparently that was the hardest thing to do. So it's actually this bit. It's back at the barn, isn't it? Billy Zane gets attacked. Sorry, Bill. But also that bit. I do love it when someone has to hold a puppet on them, pretending they're <laughs> trying to pull it off, screaming, oh, get it off me! Get it off me! Get it off me! Get it off me. And he went down easy, too. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, the dad's getting bitten, like, literally left and right in every different limb, and he gets one bite in the stomach and just immediate disembowelment. <laughs> yeah, but it's that. It's the holding it onto himself. Oh, no! <laughs> get off me! Yeah, 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 uh, so, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got, yeah, so April screams... Uh, at this and that's what alerts the family that they're in trouble so they're all in the kitchen i'm sorry that really pisses me off because why haven't they already got her in because one of the if a family member has been mauled by an unknown predator and poison darted to me that's family meeting time that's okay we should probably regroup well the reason was is because remember the dad's a bowler he's a bowler and then they never really Go with it. You know what I mean? Like, why didn't he throw a bowling ball at a critter and kill him that way? That would have been iconic. Yeah. Because he's like, honey, are you coming to my bowling tournament? The tournament and then yeah. The daughter was like, no, me and Billy are going to go driving. And then you remember? Because then the dad That's was right. like, honey, did you have the talk, our talk with the talk oh, with our daughter? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, years ago. And he was like, years? And I thought that was a good joke. Oh, that was, yeah. Uh, but then they like get in the car. I go and they 10 just feet. drive around the corner. <laughs> yeah, to the barn. <laughs> and then you go right into the barn. Yeah. And I'm like, you're not trying to hide this a little better? Oh, fair enough. So they do think she's away. Right. But if I'm sneaking off with someone, especially New York Steve, yeah. you know, I'm not just going to go behind my house. No. Especially not in that car. It's like, we have a car. Let's go to make out point. Or right. there's got to be. But also, they don't even drive it fully behind the barn. Like, half of it's sticking no. out. So if you look out a window, no. it's like, oh, they're in the barn. The sun is watching them, which yes. is a little creepy. Yeah. The sun is, like, watching them. And he can still see the car. And then he's going, like to you know like he knows what they're doing yeah but that's the firework moment he throws a firework at the cry and apparently yeah this was apparently really hard to do because it took so many uh, puppeteers and engineers to make the crite move so they had to have one like oh. blowing up its stomach one rolling its eyes back one doing the smoke coming out of it but it's so funny it eats it eats the firework gulps it and you see its stomach expand and go and then yeah and then it just goes <laughs> and falls flat on his face. Just, yeah, it just like pass out for a little bit. Yeah. He's like, Ugh, I'm done. <laughs> and then we see this is also now when we finally see it. Now it starts to go into the more comedy because we see that the Krites talk to each other and they have. This- oh <laughs> my God. I screamed. I was not ready for this. I was not ready for this. Because the, the family, they get the family inside and everyone's like running. Um, and mind you, for being from Kansas, hmm. they're all terrible shots. Okay, <laughs> that was the other thing that I was like, none of these people have ever held a gun, you know? Because like you, I'm telling you, if you go to the country where I'm from, it is gun city. Guns, just like people will be like, oh yeah, here's my 25 carbine rifle. It's like, you know what I mean? I can shoot this from 50 yards, like whatever it is. And like, it's just part of the culture. Like hunting is a thing. Right. You know what I mean? Especially if you're a farmer. Mm-hmm. He shot coyotes. Right. You're tooled up. He shot neighbor's dogs. He's, you know what I mean? He shot rabbits, chickens, whatever. But then uh, uh, they miss all these shots and the 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 crites are the iconic. This is my favorite line yes. in the movie. <laughs> When they're sitting there on the porch and then the one crike goes, they have weapons. And the other crike goes, so what? And then the gun pokes out from the door and shoots it and the crite explodes. (laughs) And then the one turns to the camera and goes, fuck. (laughs) 
I wasn't expecting it and I was I screamed I genuinely screamed <laughs> and it's also in there because obviously that's subtitled and it's in there apparently the guy that did the voices um, made up this language it was a mix of Spanish and Japanese apparently but I don't get any of that but it's the way they're going and, but it says yeah. fuck <laughs> No, man, he just rolls away. <laughs> you know, it's brilliant. Oh my, my other favorite. Oh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I don't want to spoil. Oh, well, then, then it's the uh, the bowling alley. Um, oh god, clearly the director <laughs> obviously loves this bowling logo that they came up with, which is ripping off the uh, the Ghostbusters logo. But it's a pin, a bowling pin instead of a ghost through the sort of no sign. You know, the red no sign. I didn't even. Oh, did that. you not really? Because. I, I felt like every scene it was in, it was like, it was sort of panning down to it rather than so, you miss someone's eyes out. It was like, come on. <laughs> they really clearly loved it. But I mean, it didn't work because you missed it. Right, right, right. I, I missed the joke entirely. Oh my God. The bowling alley. And that's the one time someone says, that's Johnny Steele. That's it. Yeah, because the hunters turn up. Yeah, it was even like subtitled in the bottom. Right. Like when I saw it, it was like, that's Johnny Steele. Like, oh my God. Maybe it's just country music around here. So, uh. Right, right. I mean, I, that would kind of make sense to me. But I mean, like, if Taylor Swift walked in anywhere, people would That's know. That's so but... true. Um, it must, I, I'm hoping in the, uh, in the sequels, you get more of that. Cause that's the funny thing. And also, one of the other, um, the other bounty hunters turned into the priest, right? Right. Well, the priest scene itself is insane right. the, with the church because, like, suddenly they're like blowing up a church. <laughs> it's brilliant, though. These, yeah, they arrive in the car, the bounty hunters, and they just tear through the front of the church and pull up. Yeah, they they, they destroy the door. They walk up to the front. The one transforming bounty hunter turns into the priest in front of the entire congregation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, like, I mean, having been to a, a couple churches in my life because I was, I'm a pastor's kid. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't know it by the way I talk, <laughs> but like if that happened in a church, especially in the country, like it would be over. <laughs> it's the Antichrist. Oh my God. You know, like that would be like bananas. And then they blow up the, the organ and like walk out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He turns into the priest, blows shit up. And also there's um the real priest. Uh, there's a really weird moment where he goes, so today we're going to be reading from Sodom and Gomorrah. And he says, Sodom. <laughs> And he really emphasizes Sodom and the, cuts this little old lady go hee and giggling. And I was like, are you putting in a little, did you not see that? I was like, are you really putting in a little anal sex joke? <laughs> Just a little joke for the gays. <laughs> yeah. They knew we'd be watching this eventually. In 35 years. <laughs> in 35 years, this is going to be really funny. <laughs> You so that yeah, and they 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 tear shit up at the bowling alley, uh, just looking for the crates. And then this is when no, doesn't one guy show up and he's like for some reason wants to like square up. Oh yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Because this is where they're finally like, where are the crates? <laughs> and Charlie, yeah, who we haven't seen from in a couple scenes, is sitting there and he's like, wait a minute, doink, yeah. Those are aliens. He clocks them. He clocks them because, like, I think the the one crate lifts up the bartender and he's, like, above the ground. Right. And Charlie's like, huh? And then the one crate turns into Charlie. Bounty hunter. Right. The one bounty hunter <laughs> yeah. transforms into Charlie. And then Charlie's like, oh! And then he's like, I've met God. And, you know, like... My feelings were right. Yeah. And he, like, tries to follow them around town or something. Yeah. Or... Yeah, he sort of tags along, doesn't he? He's finally found his his people. He tries to track them down. I forget. Like, he's on a bike or something. Yeah, I, I think forget. he's... Fo I, I, yeah, bike in tow. And then we go back to the house, right? And it's, like, the terrorizing of the house. Oh, yeah, the crates have got into the house now. Right. And you get the really good bit where Brad... Uh, throws an oil lamp like a fire lamp um also what year is it why have they got a fire la oil lamp also like aren't you trying to like hold off like why are you gonna set your fortress <laughs> on fire yeah, absolutely you're gonna bring the whole place down and it throws yeah. it but then you get the um the cry go oh and it rolls yeah. <laughs> it rolls yeah. to the toilet and goes ah, yeah <laughs> That was also one of my favorite bits when like, oh, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. When that crate, when that crate gets it, it's hilarious because the crate never leaves the toilet. It's just it's in the always in the face down. And we, there's one of the crates that's eating all the chickens and getting huge. Yeah. So this is something also that doesn't ever happen in any of the other films. 
it's i thought not. no it grows and grows and grows this one cry because you see it at one i remember at this one point when they open the reason they're not driving away is because one is in the the car <laughs> i mean mm-hmm. it's a bit of a tenuous reason <laughs> it's like well car can't be used um but it's huge it's absolutely because crites know how to uh they know human technology they know how to get rid of phone lines yes. they know how to cut off cars they know how to you know what i mean <laughs> well that well just to prove that point even more it even knows this bit so brad um decides that he's going to go and get help on his bike so he goes and he runs and he finds his bike and there is a critter waiting by his bike leaning on the wall like a (laughs) like a school bully and then it doesn't break eye contact with brad and just pushes the bike over (laughs) and like it might as well have had a cigarette and folded its arms afterwards i'm like so it knows they're going to come for the bike so it's just waiting by the bike and how does how does brad get away because he gets away does he just run oh Shit, I do. yeah, I guess so because he he runs and then bumps into the uh the sh- is it he runs into the bounty hunters. That's right. But for some reason, Brad clocks that they're not human. That again, already really clockable. One of them is Charlie. Yeah. And so he keeps calling it Charlie. It's probably the leather daddy outfits. To be fair, uh, well, you know, it's you the know. leather and the buckles and all the this. those outfits were. Everything. I no, I wanted them when I was a kid. I remember so clearly. So I, I was really obsessed. Um, I, I always wanted it started with Danny Zuko. So I wanted the leather jacket with the silver and I wanted that. And then it was Michael Jackson's bad and critters. <gasps> So I wanted, you know, the the silver and the leather. Was Critters after that? Because it does look like it might have been inspired. Those after, outfits by what bad? The Michael Jackson bad, yeah. Uh, it's probably the same time. Oh yeah, maybe the the more uh, thriller one. Thriller. It kind of looks like they might have been inspired that way. Yeah. Uh, but also kind of looked like Mad Max E. Yeah, totally. Like it was like I love them. I love them. Oh, we get we get our classic eighties music montage now with the critters in the house and they're like having a pillow fight. <laughs> the, I love them. And one of them I love them. And one of them, there's a uh, and there's a, a throwback to E. T. which obviously D. Wallace is in, but there's an E. T. toy. And the critter goes, Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and then like rips its head off. Yeah. <laughs> there's one critter that's eating all the fish in the yeah the, the goldfish. Fish. <laughs> there's one go- like head banging on the bed and pillows are flying. I mean, everywhere. this bit's so Gremlins because that it's very Gremlins. I and um I did read that they actually removed certain things because it was too similar to Gremlins. I'm like, wow. So this is this is the version with stuff removed. But yeah, this giant crate, like it's got human size. And the thing is, I feel a bit shortchanged because. Uh, you know, I sent you a couple, uh, yesterday, I sent you like a behind the scenes picture and you can see the giant crate. So yeah. they have made it properly. Maybe it wasn't animatronic. In the it face. looks great. Yeah, but they they tri- they don't really, you never get to properly see it. So you see yeah. you see um, like a close up of the face of it. But then also you see obviously someone from production just stomping around in like, you know, novelty slippers that you get that are like a yes. <laughs> monster slippers, <laughs> furry toes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And like the the uh the hand that like they've barricaded themselves in the one of the bedrooms upstairs and a hand comes through and like through a drawer and a uh, and like tries to grab April and pull it through and it's clearly the, the big one because it's the giant hand. Yeah, and you don't fully um, see I mean you see it now because it takes April and it drags her to the spaceship and we don't know why but what why are they taking her? And yeah, they never specify. What do they want with her? I mean, is it for food on their journey? Because I'm assuming they're leaving because they're all headed back to the spaceship. But you see it dragging her. That it was like food, but it would have been, you know, nice if the aliens even said like, bring a snack or something. Like you have like a fun, like yeah. something. But it leaves it up to the imagination because I mean, yeah. they they didn't come here to abduct someone, right? They just broke out of jail and they were just yeah. looking for somewhere to hide and live. Yeah. So I don't know. It's weird, and that that doesn't have. As I said, you know, you don't get a giant crate again. You get the critter ball, obviously, in the second one. But I, that's why I thought when the giant one was there, I thought that maybe that was like the center of the critter ball, and the other ones went around it right. or something. <laughs> right. no. But clearly not. The critter ball will have to wait. Yeah. Uh, how do they save her? Oh, yeah, because uh, oh, I forgot to say they they pepper throughout that uh, Charlie's an alcoholic, and they always blame his uh, his, oh, his, right? his drinking on the reason he thinks there's aliens. Obviously. Wait, can we talk about? The aliens ransacking and destroying the farm. Yeah, it's absolutely so unnecessary. The bounty hunters showing up <laughs> and just blasting the house to shit. <laughs> and D. Wallace going, oh, oh, my house. But she, I'll say something though. D. Wallace plays it 100. Like she plays it oh, for real. She's fantastic. Like this is a drama. This is serious. I'm in it. This is actually happening. And I'm going to play it as, that, as such. Yeah. It's full on um, serious yeah. performance. 
Yeah. But yeah, they blow the shit out of it. The the critter they like hunt and destroy like most of the critters. Yeah. There's only like three or four left at the end. Yeah. But the one critter that was in the toilet stayed in the toilet. Do you remember like cause they're going through hunting all of them and like they're in the bathroom and the critter's like, huh? <laughs> yeah. and, like and then the boy's like, There. <laughs> yes. And then they turn around and the critter, they open the toilet seat and the critter's trying to like dig down. Yes, the you see its legs. <laughs> and it just fucking blow up the whole toilet. Was, I thought that was my favorite moment. The critter's <laughs> face first down the U bend trying it. Yeah, that's going to be me trying to exercise once quarantine's over. Uh, <laughs> that, exact, that exact feeling is like me getting back on stage and being like, yeah, just I can't do it anymore. Just huffing and puffing my way through a show. At this, and so they they save April because they use his uh, his whiskey bottle. Obviously, it's one of those moments of I don't need the drink anymore. And so they make a Molotov mm-hmm. cocktail and throw it in yeah. to the spaceship, but it gets away anyway. Right, because it doesn't explode right away. No, and they take the aliens take a moment to fly by the farmhouse and laser blast it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! But it's out of spite. It's a pure choice. Yes! Yes, they go and they blow it up. They go, <laughs> and then don't they go like, uh oh, when they see the bomb, and so then the whole spaceship explodes. <laughs> but that made me, I was howling because they're just blowing everything up to be dicks. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's like this is iconic, and D Wallace going, oh, you know, <laughs> my life, my house. Yeah, <laughs> but the the best part is then uh, Terrence Mann giving the the little boy his card. Call me sometime. Do you remember? Yeah, that? the little gizmo thing off his. Actually, I think they even call it a gizmo, which is obviously a Gremlins thing. Yeah, I, I mean it has to. Be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's really weird. He, the little what eleven, twelve year old boy. He runs up and goes, "Hey." Thanks. And then it's like that thing, that, like that uh, commercial when like Michael Jordan throws the his, his like towel at a kid yeah. or something. You know, I don't whatever that is. Like, like, oh. hey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He was like, call me sometime. And it's like some alien tech that he's just going to leave on Earth. And I'm like, I don't buy it. Right. But uh, I, you then immediately find out why. Because they're like, we can't leave it that this poor family have had their entire lives decimated. We need yeah. to get somehow get it back on track. How are we going to do it? Their entire farm is flattened and so yeah. conveniently this gizmo specializes in reversing damage what i don't it like rebuilds their house which actually i thought was probably the coolest effect of the movie I, honestly i don't know how they did it none at all and the house like rebuilds yeah it's amazing but at first i thought i was like this is like a time reversal thing and then i'm like well will the critters be back like i didn't know but it doesn't look like a simple it's full they've blown something up and then rewound it because it the way yeah. it rebuilds itself when you try and think of it played the other way, it's like, huh, uh, hang on, that's not possible. So I don't know how they did yeah. it, but it, this was the coolest bit. Yeah, and they literally rebuilt a house. It was really, really cool. Um, and then everything's all honky dory, mm-hmm. and not, you know, no one's worried about uh, New York Steve's body in the barn still. Oh god, yeah. You know? <laughs> You know, like there's, a, we have a corpse up there. We gotta do something. <laughs> Luckily, like the sheriff was still alive, and so I think they'll be fine. You know, <laughs> sheriff's like we're just gonna, you know, throw them in the back. We'll, we'll just get rid of that stuff because no one's gonna believe us that tiny little aliens ate this. Kid, right. You know. <laughs> and uh, but then the house is rebuilt, and uh, yeah, we go to the. Is it? I, I think it's in the barn, and obviously you get your your dun dun dun. The chicken coop, and then the the instead of chicken eggs, it were gre- or not gremlin eggs, uh, cried eggs, and they even go like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, they, they, you hear them laughing. <laughs> the eggs chuckle, and I'm like, oh my god, what are these things? I know. But, um, <laughs> the eggs feature heavily in the second film, which I can't wait. Well, I have to because there's there's so many more of them. Oh yeah, there's tons. Tons. And um, they get, I remember at one point, we'll, we'll obviously be talking about it on a separate episode, but uh, they get mixed up at the Easter fair. So they all get painted with the, with the <laughs> other eggs and, and they're on an Easter hunt. So all these kids are going around picking up these eggs and then they Genius. hatch. It's so good. Um, but much like you, this film felt so unfamiliar to me. So it was, there were a couple of <laughs> moments, but it was... It was like watching watching it for the first time. I, it can't have been. Yet uh, sort of doesn't quite know what its tone is yet but it's a really good b b movie uh watching the first one i was shocked that there were then four of them <laughs> but obviously the second one i think is the iconic one yeah. that people remember yeah um but i do say i do think i remember the 
after watching the scene of the dad in the basement, I think I do remember that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were definitely bits that rang bells to me, but uh... I straight up thought that they were going to kill the kid. I really did. <laughs> Because there, because like it, I, the tone of the movie was so like it could have gone either way, and then like when the the son was like, "I'm gonna go and save the family," I was like, "Oh, he's dead. He's done." <laughs> I thought they're gonna have like a kid like, "You can do it, son," and then him immediately getting eaten. You know what I mean? <laughs> like just a skeleton left. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if I was directing the movie, maybe we'd have gone in a different direction. You know, but I love that D Wallace again. Uh like became like the heroine and she got to kill a bunch yeah. of them with the gun well she um there is a fifth film 2019 critters attack and d wallace comes back oh my god but i i thought I'd, i thought it was a series but then i found out that i think it was sci-fi and shudder did a series called critters a new binge in 2009 which was six episodes and then there's a new film called critters attack and d wallace comes back as the same fucking character ah! right so maybe we'll wow. have to tag that one on as well. Who knows? Or we'll talk a little bit about it. But yeah, there you go. That's our first Critters entry. Thank you so much, man. Oh, thank you for having me. Anytime. <laughs> well, well, I'll be uh, seeing you soon. What's the second one called? And the main course or something? Critters. I love it. I if that's true, I think it's the main course. Uh, Critters two. Oh, it's just tr- Critters two. No, I'm not having that. Wait. Oh no, the main course. The main course. Oh, yeah, God. it says in the poster. Oh, okay. So it's like a tagline. Right. Get ready for seconds. They're back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, and then, yeah, we've got Leonardo DiCaprio to look forward to in number three and then Angela Bassett in number four. So uh, I can't really remember, but I know the third and fourth one are fucking terrible. So I'm sure we're going to have a really great time with those. That makes sense. You know, that makes sense. That makes, that makes sense to me. That checks out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the quadrilogy. All right, well, thank you. Well, I'll see you shortly for Critters 2. Bye-bye. Romeo Dunn. Thank you much, Lee, to Cody Jameson Strand. It's so good to have you back on the show, but don't you go anywhere. As I said earlier, our episode on Critters 2 will be available on Tuesday at patreon.com forward slash Stevie's Brain Rot. If you want to find us on the socials, it's Stevie's Brain Rot on Twitter and Letterboxd. Instagram is Brain Rot Pod, and you can join the Rotters Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash Brain Rot Pod. Join us again next week on Brain Rot, where I'll be covering a film that might just give you the creeps. Until then, fuckers, toodles! (laughs) 